And one day, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a smoke-free society. We will have a society free of tobacco where moms and dads are there for their kids longer. And that society is coming, children, because of you. You are the future. You're the people in this community who cared about this issue enough to come tonight. And it's coming, too, because of you. And for that, I commend you. Thank you very much. Who would like to ask a question? Or if you have to go, I certainly understand that. Uh, OK. Yes. Can you stand and tell me your name and what Kathy group? Bully. Kath OK, wait a minute. We're going to, we're going to, hello. <laughs> I just wondered, uh, is there a percentage of lung cancer patients that are have lung cancer from not uh, smoking or snuff or any tobacco-related product? I had a housekeeper, and she got lung cancer, and uh, I don't, and she died from it. And I think it was from the cleaning products, but perhaps I could refer that question to you. Did you understand that? Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, you it's understand cool. it? <laughs> uh, I don't. Uh, the exact amount is a couple percentage points, I think, somewhere around there. Yeah. Industrial exposure. Yeah. Work exposures. Though it's, and that's sort of amazing to me. The uh, many of the patients I see who will come in with lung disease, who've smoked two packs a day for 40 years and tell me it's the plant they worked in. It really had nothing to do with the smoking. <laughs> Who else has a question? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you were next. Yes, doctor. Right. One second. Take the mic. Tell us who you are again, please. Okay. Ed, Ed Floyd, medical oncologist. Uh, what do you think of electric uh, cigarettes? And uh, it's, uh, I, I'm wondering who uh, markets it. But anyhow, uh, do you think it's better than uh, typical tobacco products and why? I happen to like it. Because guess what? It's personal. Every time I quit smoking myself, every time I quit smoking, I used a cigarette substitute. Now, if you've ever been a smoker, or if you know one, tell them to close their eyes and take a drag. And then keeping their eyes closed, exhale. Don't, can't see the smoke. It's nothing. It's like little hot, weird flavored air going through your mouth. And it, it, it's 80% of the pleasure of smoking is gone. So when you have the e-cigarette, the first few days of quitting, I happen to think it's a good thing. Sustained use? No, absolutely not. You want to switch from smoking to a con sustained use of the e-cigarette, that's like jumping out of the fifth floor instead of out of the tenth floor. We don't know how dangerous it is. It's going to take years to get the data and have the studies. So, But I think that for one week while you're going through withdrawal, or maybe two weeks, of quitting smoking and then stop and throw it in the trash or sell it on eBay and get rid of it. <laughs> but I like the e-cigarette myself. And I, I don't think it should be banned. And they won't, the FDA won't allow anybody to say that it's for quitting smoking, but it's kind of obvious. Nobody that doesn't smoke is going to buy an e-cigarette. They're expensive. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, wait, I need to have you. Uh, I'm going to go down camera. OK. My name is David Burke. I really admire what you're doing um, for education. Are there still members of your family that are part of the tobacco companies and still promoting smoking? And if so, what are your family reunions like? <laughs> <laughs> I like you. I like you for that. Because, you know, I would think, what's this audience? If you're, gonna ask me, if you're not going to ask me tough questions, you know, then... You know, but that was good, and all the better journalists asked me that. And you know, I went to see my brothers to talk about the problems and of tobacco, and that I was thinking of speaking out publicly. Patrick, you'll be an embarrassment to the family. Patrick, I have another brother. Patrick, I have stock in the family, and it's going to go down. You're going to make my stock go down, boy. And I said, because my father's first wife had four boys. They grew up in North Carolina, and. Um, they were concerned. We had some pretty heated discussions. And in the years since I've been doing this, I've received numerous awards and honors, uh, have been, you know, brought honor to the Reynolds name. And the price of the stock, well, that just soared. So they were happy. 
and uh, the you know things we we kind of I think that some of them were either jealous or more concerned about the the book I wrote about the family. They wanted it to tell more the story of their mother. But Tom Shackman is a great biographer. And we put the barnacles on my mother, on their mother. There was less on their mother than on mine, you know, because I didn't want to alienate them. But the book is, you know, certainly a fair treatment, but they didn't like the book. So anyway, in short, later I got along with my family. Sadly, I'm the only one living now. Um, there were one, I had four brothers by the first wife. They're all dead. One died of lung cancer, uh, no, excuse me, heart disease caused by smoking. R.J. Reynolds, the third. Um, another brother, my brother Mike, was a crack addict, got run over by a car. My, my brother, oh, it's so painful to talk about. But anyway, one committed suicide. There was no father in the house. Hello? There was no father in the house. There was no family. My mother was there. And, and luckily, uh, you know, I have the luck to get in therapy. I had the, uh, I was the youngest one. I saw what they were doing wrong. We had inherited money at a young age. So my family, well, there is not a lot of family now. My parents are both dead. My mom died, you know, I think smoking hastened her death in 1985. But, you know, I lived next door to my wife's parents, and I married a, you know, they're European, and we live uh, in, next to the airport in L.A. and, you know, side-by-side -side houses. We have an 18-month-old baby. It's my first child, a son. So that's my family, you know. And you find, you know, um, I mean, some, some people that have, you know, achieved a good deal had ne'er-do-well brothers, and, you know, I don't say that they're ne'er-do-well. I've, I've missed them. I wish I would have them back. I'd give anything to have them back. Yeah. So my family, well, it's a sad family. A lot of tragedy and pain. And uh, I'm trying to get an agent to get my book to HBO. <laughs> Be a good series for them, you know. But um, anyway, who else? Uh, OK, a woman. Yes? I just have Could, a question. I'm not even going to ask you to stand up. Can you tell me your name, though? Kathy. Hi. Um, at the beginning, when cigarettes first start, came out, was there more, uh, was there less additives in those cigarettes than there are today? Oh, sure. There were less additives. Uh, and they put ammonia compounds in tobacco to boost the delivery of nicotine into the bloodstream. And they also looked for strains of tobacco with higher doses of nicotine to make their products more addictive. What they did is just, it's just, I don't want to say pure evil, but it wasn't like a, the difference between a mom and a pop business owner is that the mom and pop cares about the community. They care about people that they're selling their products to. The, the huge corporations are a machine. Walmart sucks the money out of the community as soon as you spend it there. And that's the difference. And I'm not saying that Walmart's a bad thing because they make things so cheap. But I do miss the mom and pops and the, the links to the community that we used to have from our Main Street business owners. But the drugstores, there we have CVS. The, the bookstores, we have Barnes & Noble. They're in bankruptcy. Ha, ha, ha. But, um, or is it Borders? The point is, you know, things have changed. And who else? Yes, sir. Can you tell me your name? Yeah, my name is Frank. Um, do you get involved in Europe at all? Because the Western European countries, uh, I think, on average, smoke more than uh, what you find over here. <laughs> Even though they are more environmentally conscious mm -hmm. in all other areas, but when it comes to smoking, it's very bad. Svensk? No, German. German. Ah. Sie sind Deutsch. Ich war heiratet mit einem Deutscher. Ja, ich kann in Deutsch reden. Habe ich 30 Stunden in der Berlin Schule gelernt? And anyway, ja, ja, I can speak some German. Yeah. No, well, I met my first wife was German, so I had to learn German. Yeah. But, uh, and I spent time in Germany, and I, my father loved the Germans. His last wife was German. So I wanted to know. I, uh, I was invited to, I'm dying to work in foreign countries. Dying. 
to get funded to go to Europe because, I mean, in this country, I will get you know local television news if they don't have to drive too far. <laughs> uh, I will get um, you know local paper and newspaper coverage. But in a foreign country, when I was invited to Greece by the uh, Minister of Health in 2009, I got profiled in five national Greek newspapers, two national TV networks. I'll get big national news coverage in Greece. And for one day or two days, I can get an entire nation thinking about tobacco. So, and also I think it'll pay more than the speaking fees I earn in the United States. So, so that's how I support my group. I don't have a lot of money. I, I you know, support it through our speaking you know, work and the, uh, but I know that the success we had in Greece led me to think, my God, what if I did this in China? I reach a billion people. So I'm looking for corporate sponsors that can help fund my foundation to get me uh, and you know, build an endowment so that I can go on doing this work the rest of my life. And ministries of health, we've got a list of all the health ministers of the world with emails uh, from the UN World Health Organization in Geneva. I've prepared a proposal. I'm just about to send it out around the world. And it has a great letter of t uh, reference, a beautiful testimonial letter from the, the health ministry in Greece, saying it was great working with Patrick Reynolds. He's a pretty good speaker. Uh, he, was, he, he abided by the guidelines we set in media training for his media interviews. He was a team player, and he delivered a message um, you know, that, that we found very effective and powerful for our battle against tobacco in Greece. So I think that'll take me to, and I hope it's not just the Middle East, but I hope it's going to be around the world. Yeah, I'd like to take the message to other countries. And if I can have a meeting with the health minister in every country, with the press invited, uh, and, you know, they're politicians and they like to get their picture in the paper. So, you know, the, um, I would talk to each health minister about raising the tobacco tax, about a stronger smoking ban from internet cafes where kids hang out. We did that in Greece and talked to them about spending uh, tobacco prevention funding. I suggested to the Greek health ministry that they get a, a reel of television spots like the ones I showed tonight from the CDC in Washington and, and they got that reel and they started running them on TV in Greece. So I can actually, you know, leave that kind of thing plant those kinds of ideas with health ministers when I meet with them. And I want to speak to children in every nation's capital and maybe go on a five or ten city tour in China and, you know, do the local news in, in every city. And that's where I'd like to go now, yes. You bet, because we need to take it internationally at this point. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Where are you going to be tomorrow? Uh-oh, I would have to refer. Who knows where I'm going to be tomorrow? Lake oh, Megan, Megan, you are? Lake Michigan College. Uh, one second. Lake Michigan College. Lake Michigan College. Do you know where that is? Yes, I do. And at 10 a.m., do we know what building? The Mendel Center. Oh, The Mendel Center. What? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Oh, please come. Please come at 10 o'clock to the Mendelssohn Center if you want to see what I do. It's fireworks for the kids. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for caring. Thank you.